Welcome back everyone to Europa Universalis IV of the Great Culture Wars and we left off last episode with three big wars and uh, all of these three wars are currently being lost by the attackers so the Egyptians fighting with the Ryzanians are losing. We have the English Syrian Imperialist War which is also not looking good for the English. They, they had some battles in their favor at the beginning but that has uh, changed now and obviously the war goal is uh, strongly in the hands of of the Syrians and that is not going to change for the remainder of the war and then we have the Greeks uh, who had declared a war on the Ruthenian alliance without calling anyone in and obviously now they're going to have to pay the price so quite likely they will uh, they will give up these lands I mean not sure how much of that but a lot of this is probably going to go uh, to uh, row the Ruthenians here so uh, they will grow stronger perhaps they might also have to give up some other lands um, I don't know, perhaps they have to re return some cores. That is possible. Uh, we'll see if that is actually the case. Um, other than that, let me quickly check out. We have seen a piece here between the Syrians and the English. So, uh, yeah, that ended in a disaster. I wonder if the English had to give up provinces. Yes, they did. The English lost more provinces here in, uh, in, in China. Uh, so, yeah, the Syrians have grown strong over there. This is just devastating. Ever since, I mean, here's the thing, uh, when the Scottish ruled over England, I think they actually did a much better job uh, than the current Stratford dynasty that is uh, that is currently ruling because, I mean, they have, other than their independence war, they have lost every other war they have fought, basically. They lost two wars uh, against the Sami um, and now another one against the Syrians. It's just, it's really going badly for them. I think they may have even given up lands down here in Africa. Uh, no, that's not the case, but you know, it could have been they they're just really doing quite poorly So I don't know um, the English maybe maybe the Scots should be back in control uh, We saw a huge peace deal here. The Ruthenians did not manage to take everything They have left one province uh, to the Greeks, but yeah, it's cut off from the rest So it could either fall to rebels or it's just gonna get taken um, by the Ruthenians or the Turks uh, in a later war That's very possible. So that was really bad for the uh, Greeks to declare this war in the first place the Ruthenians have gotten they've kept their lances so yeah um, that's that's nice for them I suppose they obviously uh, kind of had to make up for the 23 development province they lost to the Muscovites in the previous war so you know it's good that they got some lands back other than that we have um, the Franconian Swiss nationalist war so that's the Swiss and the Gascons Ooh, the Gascons once again fighting the Franconians now uh, I wonder what was the other war that we had got going on there were three wars that were being lost oh it was the Egyptians fighting the Ryazanians right um, now I think they actually managed to take something here interestingly enough even though it looked like they were losing this they took one two three four five six seven eight nine ten <laughs> eleven twelve they took some 13 provinces wait what the actual hell that is pretty impressive, Egypt. I would have not expected that. It looked like they were losing this. Um, but yeah, the Ryzanians gave in quite quickly. Wow, Egypt. Very nice job. Very nice job holding up the uh, the flag of the Shiite Muslims. Um, very nice. Wow. Okay, that was certainly unexpected. I did not think they would do so well. Good job, Egypt. Good job, Egypt. Obviously, that doesn't, you know, bring you any closer to winning this. But still, it's, it's nice to see that you're at least trying. So yeah, uh, we have uh, two or three more wars. We have the catalan Louisiana Nationalist War. That's going to be interesting because that's uh, a war that's going to be mostly fought in North America. That's going to be really interesting because we have Louisiana and Norman Canada on one side and we've got uh, the, uh, the Catalans on the other. So this is definitely something I want to check out. And then we also have the Silesian Reconquest of Pest fighting Serbia, Ruthenia and the Saxons. Uh, and they have the Normans and the Valonians on the side. So basically nobody, because the Normans and the Valonians don't really have a whole lot of forces here in uh, in Europe. So this could mean the Saxons grow a bit stronger. They could take these two Norman provinces. They could take Valonian provinces. They could take lands here. That's interesting. And the Serbs, I mean, they could grow more powerful as well. The only ones who are probably not gonna get anything are the Ruthenians here. All right, and then we've got the Franconians uh, Swiss nationalist war that I've already mentioned so yeah the Swiss are most likely going to get fully annexed here in this war 
and the Gascons are likely to have to give up some provinces as well. I mean, this is this is pretty clear. This is a pretty clear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the outcome is quite clear in this war. Yeah, the Gascons. I mean, look at this. There's 240,000 men besieging uh, one of their fortresses. Not sure if that's the most efficient way to do it, um, but I mean, it it does. You know, it, it does bring the results. So you know, there we are. Um, once this fortress falls, uh, which it just did, Bordeaux is open and uh, it's gonna fall very soon. But um, with that, yeah, we've seen this happen. Okay, so this is pretty clear. Uh, how's it looking for the Silesians? Um, we have Serbs attacking. We also have some Romanians here, but you're not at war with, uh, yeah, not war with them. Okay, and I think the Saxons, they pretty much have the Valonians. Yeah, they just took the Valonian capital, which means we're probably going to see a peace deal here. They also took the Silesian capital, and the Swiss have just been annexed. And we also saw uh, some more provinces change hands. Wow. Basically, all of the former Burgundian territory is now under Franconian control. They've kicked back the Gascons. And uh, yeah, it looks like they're really going for their uh, Frankish empire. That'd be really cool. But they got to hurry up. They don't have that much time left. Uh, right now, so so we'll see how they do. Uh, but I do want to check out the war in North America because that is something that we don't often see. And gee, I really got to freaking change that because I keep I keep <laughs> on the wrong one. All right, hold on for a second. Um, thank you very much. All right, so we have yeah, so we have the Piedmontese, Mexico, and Californian colonies fighting uh, Norman Columbia, Norman Canada in the north, and then obviously Louisiana here. I would say that the Catalans have the upper hand when it comes to just the America-based, you know, countries. Um, but if the overlords, the Normans, well, then again, I think the Normans are quite busy right now. Uh, yeah, so probably the Normans are not going to be able to help out much. So it's going to have to be uh, Norman Canada and Louisiana uh, driving this home. Uh, otherwise, it's looking really bad. It's looking really bad. So Louisiana is focusing on Piedmontese on the Piedmontese colonies um, and there's a big battle here that the Norman Canada was it looked like they were winning but no look at the Catalans they have some 200,000 men and I think Norman Canada has like maybe a hundred thousand uh, there are some Norman forces here surprisingly um, but they are not really moving they are just kind of standing around Norman Canada does have um, well I can't see what this is they have some hundred thousand men. They have some oh, and another sixty thousand. So it yeah, it's it's hard to tell who really has the upper hand here. But it looks like uh, Louisiana might get overwhelmed. Where is your capital? By the way, your capital's over here. That's in a difficult that's in a difficult spot. Not sure if you're gonna be able to defend that. Uh, we'll go a little bit slower though here because there are a few in interesting wars going on right now. I don't really want to miss out on all of them. We also have. Oh, another war that the Normans are involved in. Is this the third war? Yes, the Danish-Norman Imperialist War. So Denmark has decided to declare war together with the, well, their personal union and their colonies, as well as their allies, the Leonese, with the Prussians, the Estonians, the Scots, and their personal union as well. That is an incredible alliance. I mean, the Danish and their personal unions, the Scots and the Galicians together, all of their colonies, then the Prussians and Estonians, as well as the huge and hugely powerful Leonese, all fighting the Normans here. And the English! The English are in this war as well. Alright, this is interesting, so we'll check that out as well. Um, we have the Ryazanians are getting pounded again by the Crimeans, and the Sami trying to reconquer some of their lost lands as well. Okay, so this is a very, uh, yeah, very busy region. A lot of wars are being fought over here, and look who snuck in and took parts of uh, of Siberia. Occitan tar the, the Occitans were really quick in, in go going over here. Wow, I'm actually kind of surprised by that. But yeah, so this region very moved. So many forces uh, running around. Uh, but the Ryazanians are basically just going to get... They're going to get squished between these two neighbors. I'm, I must honestly admit, I'm surprised at how well the Sami are doing. Um, because I would have thought that they were that they would die before the Ryazanians. I would actually expect it, but right now, it looks like the Ryzans are the ones who get crushed first. But yeah, um, so many more wars going on. We've got, obviously, yeah, the Sami with the Silesians. How's that going? Obviously not going particularly well. Uh, the Serbs have a lot of the Hungarian territory occupied. Um, the, 
the Saxons even hired a condottieri from the Franconians here, and there's 60,000 Ruthenians helping out with the siege of Turda, uh, which is gonna, yeah, be, uh, come, come under uh, Serbian occupation very soon. And um, other than that, Saxons, I suppose they have pieced out the Valonians. They didn't get anything. And um, I, I think the Normans are pieced out of this war as well. So the Saxons didn't get anything. So they better get some land here. Otherwise, I could imagine that they are quite unhappy with their Serbian ally. Now, the Danes will finish off what they have started here in northern Germany. They will take these two provinces uh, off of the Normans. And then that's probably all they're, they're going after. Um, now, this is really interesting. The Scots, who have uh, been defeated by the English before, are now moving in. And for some reason, the English are not really moving most of their forces. Don't know why that is. I mean, they have so many troops, and yet they decide not to use them. That's kind of strange to see. We see a big naval battle here. The Leonese, West Indies, uh, and the Highlanders, uh, the uh, obviously the personal union buddy of the Danish, are fighting. This is really interesting. This is really interesting. I would not have thought... Um, okay, why is the trade here? Go away. I don't want trade here. I would not have expected the English to, uh, to actually come under pressure. But, you know, fighting the Danes, the Leonese, and the Scots... That might be too much for their navy to handle, and uh, you know they're losing, they're losing on the mainland as well. Scotland's slowly pushing forward, and they have a lot of cores to take back, and I think they certainly want to have them. I wonder, uh, it's the Danish conquest, so I don't know, I don't know. Maybe they're gonna get that. Maybe parts of this will get, uh, will be, will be given back to the Scots as possible. But for some reason, they're not advancing. Uh, the uh, Bold fighter English general here is just suiciding himself into Lancashire. Uh, interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what the English are doing, uh, what they're waiting for, uh, but they're uh, they're still capable of pushing back. They just gotta they just gotta really move their forces around. All right. Well, so that's that's what's been going on. The Silesians are close to a peace deal here, so we're basically just waiting for a few more fortresses to fall, which is fine. Um, other than that, we have, yeah, these wars going on. Obviously, Ryazan being absolutely smashed. I would like to check back to the North American war. It looks like the Catalans are losing this. The Catalans seem to be losing this. Um, the Piemontese actually send over some 30,000 men. And Mexico is uh, sending 48,000 as well. But in the North, we see, hmm... Well, I mean, the Normans have the problem, here's the thing. Norman Canada is not only fighting, uh, you know, the Catalans here, but they're also fighting the new Dutch and uh, Leonese Oregon. So they're really, really hard pressed on here. Um, and I think without the Dutch intervention, uh, yeah, well, without the Dutch-Danish intervention here, they probably would have won. Um, but yeah, look at that. So many more uh, people attacking them. Okay, so I think the... Catalans will win their war against the Louisianans, mostly because uh, Norman Canada is busy fighting so many other uh, nations right now. So, good luck uh, for Louisiana here, but I think you are probably going to get defeated, and you will have to give up a lot of lands. Um, so, the Catalans don't really have any claims. Uh, the Louisianans, however, they have many claims uh, here on these lands. If they happen to be successful, they could really take a lot of land here, but I doubt it. I don't see that. I mean, they have 50,000 men there. That seems to be their main army. Um, but the Catalans have twice that number. So, yeah, we'll see how things turn out. Um, but uh, as soon as their capital falls, the Louisianans will probably lose. Okay, there we see a nice battle here. The Highlanders are uh, coming back and helping out their Scottish friends. I kind of like that the Scots and Highlanders are, you know, fighting together again against the English here. It's, it's sort of funny. Uh, Wales is being liberated as well by some... Uh, Highlanders here, and no focus on the siege, uh, as well as Gloucestershire. So it's just London that is still standing proudly in English hands, but that might change as well. As soon as Essex falls, we might see these Scotsmen uh, move in there. Well, that's interesting. Certainly interesting to see. At least it's good to see that, uh, you know, finally the English are actually moving their troops around. But yeah, uh, we saw a peace deal here between Silesia and the Serbs. Wow, the Serbs re-emerged as a, as a very, at least dominant regional power, I would say. 
Certainly not a great power, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants they took in this peace deal. Basically, uh, yeah, I mean, they didn't take this uh, important uh, mountain fortress here. They should have taken that for sure. But still, wow, what a comeback, Serbia, certainly. And they also, wait, the Finns? I think the Finns may have, did they get this province back? Maybe they have gotten this province back. That's that's likely as well. And then obviously the Saxons managed to grab a few, well, at least one province as well. So, you know, they, they at least got something for their efforts, which is great to see. But wow, Serbia, I mean, they were they were a one province mine at some point. They were part of, they were under a personal union of, of Muscovy, and they they fought back and now proudly present their name on the map. They have obviously moved away from the initial starting territory but they're still around and that is quite a feat uh, to be proud of um, but yeah other than that I think is there anything here that we need to check out particularly you know the Sami absolutely wrecking the Ryazanians and obviously the Muscovites and Crimeans are helping as well so we'll just see a peace deal here soon pretty sure about that and um, then what else have got going on I see a hundred thousand Franconians walking around we saw some peace the Catalans pieced out the Louisianans, so let me see what you have taken. Uh, nothing? It looks very much like nothing, honestly. That is very strange. Maybe Piedmontese Mexico? No. This, to me, looks like a white piece, actually. So the Catalans declared this war, they were winning, and then they just pieced out? That's awfully strange, actually, but alright, well... That's, that's okay. That's fine by me. I mean, this would have been the chance for the Catalans to really bump up their development. Still, nowhere near the 3,000 development of the Occitans, which I think at this point are going to win the series. Not really any doubt about that. I mean, how are you possibly going to stop them uh, at this point? They have annexed their personal units. So you can't take that away from them. Uh, I think the only thing you can do is uh, free their colonies. That would obviously hurt them quite a bit. But even then... I mean, they're like to the Irish, English, and then the Neapolitans, Aragonese, maybe not too useful, but uh, they have some strong allies themselves, so unless they fuck up majorly, they should be able to drive this home. Um, but yeah, other than that, English, uh, they're not fighting back. They, they're losing uh, all kinds of occupations here. They are defending with their navy, a little bit at least, um, but for the most part, they're just getting slaughtered. And Normandy, right! Their capital is over here in Ireland now. I I totally forgot about that. So that has been taken over by uh, the Estonians of all people. They uh, traveled quite a far, quite far, uh, you know, for this war that they are most likely not going to get anything out of. Um, so interesting. But yeah, um, let's quickly check out some more results. I feel like I've missed another war. Hmm. We check that one, the one in the Catalans. Oh, well, maybe that maybe that war all the wars. I know it's possible. All right, I think we'll uh, move forward a little bit. I would like to see a conclusion here with uh, with Normandy. I would like to see what's what's going to happen with them, um, and England as well, obviously. If they're going to have to give these lands back, there's a big naval battle. The Leonese are now fighting the English. This is kind of the payback uh, from when the Spanish Armada was sent against the English and was utterly destroyed. Uh, that happened in this series as well. So that's that's kind of fun. And wow, we just saw a stack wipe. The Scottish armies are showing no mercy and relentlessly going after the uh, the English here, who are getting wiped. But this is really just poor leadership. Like why, why? Oh, wow! They just a peace deal saved the uh, English from other humiliation there. But there we have the peace. So the Danes they took these two problems from the Normans. Not really a big surprise there. That's exactly what I expected. I do not believe that we have seen any changes in the colonies no so this was the danes took these two provinces but the scots are the true winners here because they took back four of their cores here in uh, in northern england and uh, i mean still they're not quite back to their uh, pre-independence war borders but it definitely looks really good uh, the scots have grown stronger and i want to see you know the scots are still behind the english in terms of uh, in terms of development but not that far interesting and the normans are now well hold on it was the crimean peace deal that i didn't they didn't check out oh yes so crimea managed to take a whole bunch one two three four five six seven 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, some 20 provinces? That is insane. Crimea took so much land in this. They catapulted themselves from no great power to great power rank 6. And um, who did they kick out? Um, they kicked out the Catalans. Yeah, they kicked out the Catalans from the great power rank. And the Sami are still fighting. So what wars have we got going on? It's just the Sami reconquest uh, of, uh, of their lands against the Ryazanians. Wow. Very impressive. Very impressive. All right. Well, on that note, I think we'll end this episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.